Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is a bit different, and for my old viewers, you'll know what I'm doing here, and for you new viewers, this is something new to you. Let me explain. You can, any one of you that have watched my videos, can send in a head and I'll flow it and it costs 30 bucks. And now you get a flow sheet, plus the shipping obviously back to you as well. But for an extra 30 bucks, I'll make a video critiquing your port work. Now one guy in the past, he sent in a set of Dragon Slayers that he'd ported, and I think the thumbnail says this guy's got balls because it does take a lot of balls to uh, have some professional critique your work. It's a, it's a kind of challenging, and that's what this one is. So I did not port this. I don't port cast iron, as many of you know. A customer sent this head in and said, hey, could you critique it and do a video of it and flow it? So that's what I'm doing today. So I've already flowed it, and I know what it's done, but just to tell you what this head is, if you're a small watch heavy guy, you know what this head is. This is a Vortec 906. Now, Vortec had patterns. There are a couple. There's a 906 and there's an 062. But there's also exceptions within the 906 realm. You can have a hardened exhaust seat. And typically, those flow far worse than the exhaust. So there's that. Now, if I come off harsh through this video, I don't mean to be. But my wife says I sound harsh and sometimes I can be a dick. So I guess sometimes I can be. So anyway, um, bear with this as I go through it. The guy sent in a couple of molds, by the way, to go with this. I have never, ever poured a mold, which you might find shocking. I probably should, but I have a feeling my shop would be filled with these. Anyway, so they're there, and we'll kind of look at them in a minute. So I will say, getting started here, looking at the critique, he messed the very most important thing he has not done. And it's because something a home person cannot do, and that is the valve job. When you see the flow numbers, you're going to understand how why I'm saying this. It's not because I'm trying to sell you a valve job. It's because I'm trying to tell you and express to you that the valve job helps flow more than any of your grinding. So you can have a perfectly ported port and I can screw it up with a valve job and it will look horrible on the flow bench and performance wise. The valve job is the most important thing. And as I'm saying this, some of you think valve job, you think it's only important for sealing. No, the other angles that go with it help air flow. It is the most important thing to do. And I know you might have picked up your uh, book from some famous author who ports cylinder heads and he tells you grind here, bias here, and all that. No, the first most important thing is a valve job. Can't be done at home, sadly, unless you've got a seat and guide machine. So a seat and guide machine, proper tool cutters, and you can create a great valve job that will actually increase flow more than what all of the grinding did. I know it sounds weird because this part is the most important part and he has not. How can I tell? Um, this right here on the exhaust, which I don't know how well the camera is gonna capture it, probably not very good because it's an iPhone. You can tell he kind of nailed, you can see there, that's marked from a cartridge roll. It got right up here into the seat I don't know how I hate the iPhone. Anyway, it got there and it's into the seat. So regardless, you'd have to have a valve job for it to seal. And I don't think he was just, he may, I think he was just playing on this head because none of the rest are done. So I'm gonna assume that. But regardless, you have to have a valve job. I know you might've saw a video from someone also famous telling you, hey, you can do a flapper wheel and you can just come across here. No, you can't. Don't do ever, ever do that. You will ruin your valve job. It will not seal. And um, if you're like, yeah, it does, it doesn't leak as much, it will wear out because now it's rough, it will tear up. It's not the proper way to do things, period. Don't do that. Um, but for me, porting, the first thing you should do is a valve job. It helps flow, needs to be done. He didn't hear, so I'm just going to critique what he has. First thing I saw, obviously no valve job. It also means it's going to be stock valve sizes as well, so it's 194, 150. Now, if I go look at some of the stuff first off, being the valve job one inch this way and one inch this way is the most important part for flow. So if I look at from the valve job this way towards the chamber, it doesn't look that bad because in all fairness, stock vortex really aren't that bad. This one being stock. There's no huge ledge where it's running into that's gonna block flow. So if you look at it at this point, it looks good. So you didn't really have to do anything on this. And I know you're like, no, you should really knock down this and smooth loose and it'll really help you. Doing all that, and I've seen it in the book too. All that does is make your ego feel better, but what you did is reduce compression and whatever you gain with flow, which is minuscule, 
because the valve would have to be almost at one inch valve lift for this to become an intrusion, you've lost in compression. So not, not what I'd do. This thing right here, this is stock. Usually even when I'm pouring, I'll kind of round it over just so it doesn't create a sharp point that can create some heat. So that this is not that bad. It kind of looks worse than what it is. However, this part right here, what they did is they just kind of smooth this out. There's really, I don't even do that. Some people do because it helps with detonation. I don't. On some heavy nitrous stuff, I will, but not on a Vortec head. Anyway, so there's that. I will say the other thing about grinding this, so there's that part. The other thing that's hard about grinding on these is the port starts square. And it takes a little bit of talent, more talent to grind these than an aftermarket head. And I'm like, the biggest reason is because they start square. So I'm looking at my deals here. Here's what I mean. This is the stock port. You see how it's square? I mean, what I mean by this is look at this ridge right here. It's going almost a square into it. It's not rounded like an aftermarket one would be. So in other words, an aftermarket one would be more curved. And all you'd have to do to make it bigger is you just follow the contours and grind and you get bigger. In order to make this a proper size for the bowl, you actually have to focus grinding here, just this region first, like oh, this was my burr, that's what I do. And I do the same over here because it's squared until I get a round shape. Then I could start going back and forth. Otherwise you have what you have here, which is what he has. Now I'm gonna warn you on a lot of other stock cast iron heads, there's usually water between the intake and exhaust port, like the double humps. On Vortex, they're solid, so you're good in a way. Um, unless you might get some that, I should say most of everyone I've seen is solid in between. Or in other words, I haven't maybe pushed it as far enough. But I would think so. I've done one that had like a 2125 intake valve and I made the bowl pretty large and round and never got any water there. So I'm fairly certain it's solid between here. And that's part of the reason why they also crack between here is you can get a crack here and a crack here on the, sorry, here. Typically happens on the vortex. Anyway, so if I look at it, the first thing he's done is the throat. Now he left the throat at 87%, so that's not bad, that's good. It's a nice rounded shape and you can kind of tell, this being the porter one, um, if you look at his deal through here. So not bad, not bad. The bowl, he, had, he did enlarge it and not bad. Like I said, just gotta focus more on grinding here first till you get a round shape and then start rounding. His bowl's 92%, which is still kind of small, um, but it's a stock casting, so you don't, it's hard, you really, there is water on this side. Um, you can't make the bowl too big really on these because you're gonna get in the water or too far over this way. And especially if you brought the bowl too far backwards, there is water back through here. So anyway, as far as that goes, then you look at this, because I know a lot of you notice this, you're like, oh, that looks horrible. Eh, give him some slack. This is how it looks stock. And that probably took quite a while to do. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, I know most of you think this is where you gain your flow. You just smooth that puppy out and watch the CFM just go right up. Not really. All this work typically gains very little CFM, which you'll see. But anyway, so far from this side, not bad. On the exhaust side, I'm gonna make it real small, simple. If I was you, I probably wouldn't have done this part here. I understand kind of why you did, but we'll get a better view to see that. Again, you should have a valve job because then you have more radius and I guarantee I'd pick up 20 CFM just doing the, on, on the exhaust, not peak, but probably at four, I'd pick up at least 10 there. But I would list 10 CFM, 20 CFM at some areas just with a valve job, no grinding whatsoever. All right, let me flip it over so you can get a better view. Here we have down the intake port view. And I could tell right here that he still left it not so much touched up through here, but on the roof, he, there's a notch right here, which there's no light in here to see, but there's a notch right here and he did knock that out. So there's good. It doesn't really look like he did anything with the short side at all on the, as far as this view goes. So nothing's been done there. And if you had, you would have probably gained a little bit more CFM, but that looks stock, but I could tell you, let me flip it around and show you where he has done stuff so I could show you. Here's a short side view on this. This is a much better view to see. This is stock, so you got your ridge here from when they did the cutter to start. What he did is, I am tell, by the way, I think you're left-handed. Um, and I'll tell you why I think you're left-handed, because you started with, if the head was this way and you're grinding, you started with this one. Most people would have started with that one. Anyway, uh, if you're right-handed. Uh, sidebar though, uh, back to this. This is the shape of his short side, and it looks like all he did was just round that. So he just 
blended it and made a nice curve because you can still see it's not a uniform shape. This is what I mean by it's kind of squared and then gone to that. Had I been me, I would have knocked that down right there to make it a, see how it goes curve? I would have made that curve continue to here. But be careful though. Um, I also would have laid back this short side because it's the same height. It's nice and rounded, so good job there, except for it's sharp here, which is where the valve job would be. So if you did the valve job, it would gain some more CFM anyway because it had been rounded coming out instead of sharp into that. So it's it's not super sharp there, but if you'd done the angles, you would for sure would have felt it rounded better. But you can lay back this short side and you will pick up some flow, especially in the higher lifts. But you gotta be careful though, because you lay it back too far, you're gonna get into water. So laying it back and then widening here would have helped. So there's the intake port. The exhaust port, I'm gonna tell you, he did pretty good on this. Um, it doesn't, it may not look as pretty as what you'd think, but it actually moves some pretty good amount of air. So let me turn on the light one more step. There we go. So as you could tell, no valve job done because you could tell where it's gotten into it right there where he's grinding. But he did knock, he blended that. So that's good. Still made the bowl a little bit larger, not by much. And then if you notice, the outside ones are much easier to do than the inside ones because they got that step there. So you start off with an easier one, I'll give you credit there, but it's nice and round. Like it should be. And we look at the short side. Now that's not bad for the exhaust. See what the, sh look at the apex here. Round, good. Very good job there. So the exhaust looks really, really good. So no complaints there. Let me see if I can't lay it down without dropping it. Give me this a second. And there's your shape. Which it looks like all he did was round this. And it feels nice and smooth. Looks looks good so i know it's hard to see with cast iron aluminum so much easier to film but not bad not bad but what's all this gain so you've seen what's done and you can see his molds by the way how do i know one's factory this is the porter one that's the guide that's what the shape of his guide looks like the stock one's round and if you look at them you just get a better idea they're not that different So you can tell some spots where they're larger, but it's not a huge, huge difference. And also again, square, square. He's got a little bit more round, but you get the idea. Anyway, let's look at the flow numbers and see what happens. I forgot to mention two more things. So I'm gonna do them real quick before I show you the flow numbers. One, these don't have the guides machined. So if you're running anything more than a 450 lift and probably even that, your guides, the, the, the retainer will hit the guide. So these have to be machined. So 450 lift currently as it is, that's all you're gonna get. You have to machine them. So in other words, cut them down so that you can get more clearance. Second thing is he used stock valves and it looks like he also listened to a video where they smooth them out on this back cut. Um, there is no, I mean, there kinda is, looking at it. There's a small back cut, which the camera doesn't capture real well. It looks like he tried blending that in. That's all it's done, but this is stock valve. The exhaust, it's got a really fat wide seat and a little bit of a back cut. You get the idea, it's stock. So anyway, let's see what the flow numbers do now. Here are the flow numbers. Now this is um, his ported stuff. This is flowed on a 430 bore, no exhaust pipe. If I look, um, I really care about four, six and peak, but in this case it's different because you can't even get to six. At 450 lift, you're gonna hit. The, the retainer would hit the, the seal. So, um, here we go, here we are looking at it. 400 number is really important, it's 219. That's not bad, but I mean, a lot of work, 219. Peak number is at 244 at five. So if you were to machine the valve guide, you could take advantage of that. After that, it kind of drops off and starts coming back to 241, not bad. Um, the exhaust, that actually is really, it's really good. And I mean, even with an aftermarket head standard, this is really good. So there are, Several aluminum aftermarket heads only flow like 170, 180. So you've got it to match that. So 165 at four, 170 and up is really better, but not bad for a stock casting because I think stock, they only flow like in the 140s. And you got up to 185 peaks. Some really good progress there on the exhaust. Nice. But I wanted to show you this. So this is Keith's. Keith's the guy that worked for me on Fridays. 
Um, he has a Vortec 906. I did a video on this. You can go back and look in the past. Only thing he did, zero grinding, is we did a three-angle valve job. That's it. Not even five, nothing fancy, just three-angle valve job, radius on the exhaust. That's it. And here's the number. So you can kind of get an idea of this is just valve job. This takes, he's probably spent way more time, especially since it's cast iron porting these. How much of a difference is it from just comparing to just doing a valve job? Let's look. Uh, 160 to 69. See if the valve job helped. Um, 200, 128 to 136. Ooh, big gain there. No port work required. Um, let's see, 184 to 189 at three. No port work, just valve job better. Then at four, 219 from the ported one to about 219. So up until four, doing no port work whatsoever, just doing the valve job, you're about the same flow there. But then look, at 500, you're at 244, 241. So you, at that point, you find a 3 CFM better. At 6, 233 to a, there you go. Uh, 6 is right here for him, 224. So, oh, sorry, his was 480. I'm, I messed up. I forgot he has a 40 lift cam. So at 480, he was 241. At 5, it was 225. So really, you did a lot better there at 5. A lot better there. And at 6, 224 to your 233. But the point I'm trying to make is really from probably 480, you guys would be tied. From 480 on, that's when you're better. But you can't even get there because you can't reach that valve lift, at least on the intake side. Now let's look at the exhaust. Remember, all he did was a valve job. 50 to 39, the valve job's way better. Um, 100 to 98. So yeah, a little bit better there. 141 to 133, much better there. Let's see at three, 141 to a 133, much better there. Much You're doing really good on the exhaust. 165 to a 149, and even a peak, 158 to your 185. So you're a good 30 CFM better on grinding on the exhaust. Not the case on the intake. So don't feel discouraged uh, for the guy watching this. He did a great job grinding. And if you had mixed this, so in other words, if I had done the valve job to go with your work, these numbers, for sure, what would happen would be this. Better, better, better. Um, slightly better, slightly better, and these would be about the same. So that's what would have happened with the valve job. In other words, you would have taken a mixture of this, but they would have been better than these here. And then from this point on, you'd have been about the same. It would have been a win. And on the exhaust, you would have gained a little bit more too. So... Anyway, hopefully this helps you, whoever's doing some grinding on some 906 Vortec heads. And um, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for sending this in. Hopefully I wasn't too harsh on you. You did a really good job on grinding cast iron because it's, uh, it's a passion. But uh, anyway, you guys take care.